In this video, I'll share seven tips on how you can avoid being banned from sports betting bookies because you're using profitable sports betting strategies like positive EV and arbitrage betting. Now, if you are a winning sports better, you'll likely have seen restrictions being placed on your betting accounts. Whether that be for promotions or stake limits or markets where you're banned from betting entirely. Now, the sports betting strategies that I do teach, mainly arbitrage and positive EV betting, but with more details um, in the description down below, are only profitable as long as we have accounts to bet with and we are actually able to take advantage of these opportunities. So if we lose access to our accounts or have restrictions placed on them, that will limit our future potential profits. So that means we need to utilize the following tips to be able to increase the lifespans of our betting accounts. So the first major tip is to understand how bookies bucket customers. Bookies generally have four brackets of buckets, where they classify customers into. The first group of customers is the customer group we want to make our account seem like we want to be in. That is, if your accounts aren't restricted in some way and you've just been betting for recreational purposes, then you're probably a losing better and bookies put you in this bucket because they see you as a profitable customer and they want to keep you on for as long as possible and sometimes even offer you more promotions and rewards to keep betting with them. The next two stages is maybe we, we want to keep an eye on this person because sometimes they've identified sharp bets or they've been using a few promotions constantly and we want to make sure they're not just targeting promotions only. So we'll keep an eye on this set of customers. The third group of customers is those who are seen to be abusing promotion and placing sharp bets. And this group of customers, they'll generally place restrictions on such as no more promotions allowed. And you're basically only able to bet on the majority of markets where the bets are all negative EV. The final group of customers is the group of bettors that bookies really, really hate and will generally try to ban highly like close their accounts or prevent them from betting on markets such as markets where there's common arbitrage opportunities that they just do happen to find. They will either choose to restrict their betting where they're not even allowed to bet a single cent, or they might set restrictions on how much they can bet, like maybe $10 where at that point is not much point in betting. You can move between different buckets throughout your betting journey and how bookies determine where you end up going or where you move to comes down to their internal trading team, which is their group of smart people who frequently analyze your account and see what kind of better you are. So the second tip follows on from the first tip, which is to use mug betting. Mug betting essentially just means betting like a stupid person. That's what a mug by definition is. You want to try to look as stupid as possible to try to fall into that first bucket or category, which is the category where bookies are very happy to let you on and bet as much as you want. And they will generally not look too much at your account and monitor you too much. To do this, either you can place bets like line bets where it's generally a 50-50 coin toss and that market is very efficient and there's not much value to be made by the punter. So if you're betting at 1.9 odds on something that should be two odds, you're basically donating money to the bookmakers and they're just printing money off. So they'll think this kind of betting will put you in the nothing to worry about category and they'll stop monitoring you hopefully. Generally, if whenever I open a betting account, I like to recommend people to start off with mug bets only, um, as in the initial stage, the bookmakers won't have any idea what kind of better you are. So that first bit of information they get is very, very meaningful to them to classify you as soon as possible. So if you do a lot of mug bets early, you're going to be put in the nothing to worry about category. And then later on, when they stop monitoring you, then you can do more positive EV and arbitrage bets that will actually make you a lot of money. So you're sacrificing a little bit of money in the start to make a lot more later down the line. And this is where the term upturned whale comes from. So an upturned whale is someone who was a whale, like a big fish, that was donating a lot of money, but now they've turned smart, either through learning from someone else or figuring out things later on themselves at a different stage in their lives. And then they're making more money off the bookmakers later on, while the bookmaker is no longer worried about them. The third tip is to generally avoid any suspicious betting patterns that the regular recreational punter won't be using. So this includes things like not betting on obscure markets, like for example, the Russian table tennis, where like nobody is even really watching the sport. And if you place a bet on that, you're probably going to be the only person to bet on it. And whoever's managing it can easily find your bet and see what kind of better you are. If there's not many other people betting on that market, then your bet's not going to be camouflaged away, especially if it is a positive EV or arbitrage bet. Also, you should avoid betting on the play markets as much as possible. These include things like the NBA number of points, number of assists, rebounds. These aren't bet on very commonly, and if they do, there's a lot of good arbitrage and positive EV opportunities where you can make a lot of money, but if you do them too often, 
then your account is going to be flagged pretty quickly. So try to stick with the mainstream sports like the teams winning and how many of total points. That's generally a bit safer place to place your bet if you don't want to get restricted. Also, something kind of suspicious is, for example, betting on a race like a horse race a day before the event actually happens. So this mostly applies for races. Before the lineups are even announced or what the weather is known for that day, you're going to be betting on it like maybe 24 hours beforehand. This is something that most punters don't do. Most punters who bet on the races bet like a few minutes before the race. They might see it on the TV and then decide to start $5 on it or something like that. They generally do not do much analysis before the race. So because there's not, again, not many people betting on it at that time, your bet is going to stand out. It might be the only bet being placed the day before and the bookmaker can easily find your bet and make a judgment on what type of better you are. The fourth tip to avoid being restricted early by sports betting bookmakers is to size appropriately and reasonably. This means avoid using pure arbitrage amounts, for example, $35.57. This clearly stands out as someone who might be partaking in arbitrage to the bookmaker as you're trying to get a locked in conversion with another bet on another platform. So what you can do instead is like round this down or up to like $35 or $40 depending on which one's better. Most recreational punters just bet like round amounts like $5, $10, $20 and this is the kind of behavior we want to try to emulate as much as possible. They might also have promotions where they say max bet is $100 or max bet is $50 and you wanna be avoiding betting the entire $50 as in that case, it seems like you're just taking advantage of the promotion as much as you can. Instead, what you can do is reduce the stake down to like $30 or $40 to take advantage of it, but not to the fullest extent. The fifth tip that I have for you guys is to just understand that different sportsbooks or bookies ban people at different rates. So some sportsbooks or bookmakers, especially the smaller ones that aren't as reputable or don't have as much money and can engage in some more dodgy practices, you want to be trying to avoid those as some of them ban you very quickly. They might ban you after placing one or two bets on a promotional offer, even though you've done some mug betting on their account as well and sometimes it's just not even worth opening an account with them in the first place. Even one of the bigger bookmakers out there such as Ladbrokes will ban you very quickly as well, generally within a week, whereas like other bookmakers such as Tab will happily let you on for over a year even if you just bet on promotions with them after you've done some mug betting at the initial stage. The sixth tip I have is to avoid withdrawals as much as you can. So I'm not saying don't withdraw at all until your account's been banned. That's not a good thing in most cases, but what happens when you withdraw is it will likely be triggering a review of your account by the bookmaker. They will have a look at your account and see what type of better you are because they know this person's gonna withdraw. That means it's probably won some money. So we wanna have a look at their account. And this is something we want to avoid. We don't want them to look at our accounts if we're a winning better using positive EV and arbitrage. So unless you really need that money, try to avoid withdrawing. The other reason to not listen to this advice is, and actually go ahead and withdraw, is if the sportsbook or bookmaker you're using is not that reputable. For example, some of the smaller bookies in Australia. This is because they can do some dodgy things like freeze your account for suspicious activity or they can ask for very personal items such as like bank statements under the excuse that they're trying to see that you can actually afford to be placing the bets that you're placing um, but they only really do this to winning bettors so it's just a strategy for them to try to avoid letting you withdraw and keep the money in your accounts. So in those cases generally once your account balance reaches 500 I would actually recommend withdrawing but for the very reputable bookies out there, you don't really need to withdraw unless you've been restricted, in which case you can just withdraw after the restrictions have been placed onto your account. They generally won't stop you from withdrawing. Final tip that I have for you guys is to understand that as long as you're a winning better, the sportsbooks will ban you from using their promotions eventually and sometimes even stake restrictions on your account if you are using pure arbitrage bets. And there really is no way around this. You can't camouflage your account forever. You can only make it last long. This is because bookmakers, how they make money is through their customers. And if they're losing money to a customer, that's not in their business model. They need to make money to pay for their staff, website and advertisements, etc., etc. So they obviously can't have you just taking money out from their business forever. So ultimately, you need to understand that your objective is not to prolong the lifespan of your account, the objective is to increase as much as possible how much profit you're going to win from the bookmaker before you eventually get banned. Obviously, if you have a longer time span, that should increase your profits. But if you're making smaller and smaller profits each month, then that sometimes might not be worth it. It might be better off to just hit more promotions or bet larger sizes when the positive EV opportunities do occur 
And even then, though, if you get banned quicker, you might have made more money from that account than you otherwise would have if you'd done like maybe 90% of mug bets and lost some money there to try to camouflage your account too much. Just go in with the mindset that you will be banned eventually and these are some things you can do to try to pre prolong it and make it last a bit longer, but it's not the thing you should be focusing on. You should still be focusing on maximizing your profits and getting as much out of your betting accounts as you can. Now, if you want to actually learn the strategies that I used to make over $50,000 before I eventually got restricted from most sports betting accounts, then you can have a check at my sports betting courses linked over here or in the description below. These share both the theory and also practice and real life examples of bets that I've placed and examples of similar bets that you can place and I teach you how to place these bets as well yourselves um, by giving you practice examples and questions and answering your questions in the Discord so you'll be fully ready and become profitable sports bettors yourselves. I also offer money back guarantees where you get your money back for the amount you paid for the course if you're not able to make it back as long as you have access to the sports betting accounts listed in that country. If you enjoyed this video then make sure to give it a big like down below and subscribe to this channel to not miss out on my other betting tips. As always take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.